this is Lara from Vintage 61 Storehouse. We have been trying to do our live video and for some reason uh, we could not get it to work. So give us a shout out and let us know that we are now live. It literally took us 15 minutes to figure out. I don't, well, I don't even know what I did different. So um, I think we're good and live, um, but anyway. So we are here at Vintage 61 Storehouse. We are located in Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, we do these lives once a month. We are doing things a little different this time. So normally, Miss Kathy or one of us finds a piece that we love and we kind of build around that. But this time, we wanted to introduce the farmhouse collection. That's kind of what Miss Mustard Seed wanted us to do. Um, so here we are. We are having farmhouse collection, but we did it a little different. So we're having the farmhouse meet mid-century modern. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna introduce you to what colors are actually in the farmhouse collection. Anytime during the video, you are more than welcome to put questions on there. Uh, Lori's behind the camera. Miss Kathy is gonna join us in a little bit to teach us all about home decor. Um, but you are more than welcome to ask us questions and I will try to answer them the best I can. If not, Chris will totally answer them on there as well. So let's go with French enamel. So awesome blue works really well in a ton of styles. The blocks that I'm going to show you, they are painted in the color. Um, the truest part of that color is gonna be in the middle. And then the other one, this is with an antiquing wax and this is with a white wax. Uh, we use these when people want to use different finishes and what the color actually looks like on something. So this is French enamel. Um, that is the first color in the farmhouse collection. I'm going to show you pieces painted in these colors uh, a little later. So let's stick to what else is in here. Um, we have, this is Luckett's Cream. It is named after uh, the Luckett store. If anybody wants to take a little road trip, it's amazing. Um, but it's an awesome, very like vintagey old green. Um, like I said, again, uh, the white wax and the dark wax, but this is the truest form of that color. Awesome green, highly recommend. It's great for spring. Then we have grain sack. Um, this, these colors, we have three uh, neutrals in the farmhouse collection. Uh, very similar, but definitely noticeable differences when they're all together. So grain sack, little definitely bit of like off-white in there. Um, then we have farmhouse white, which I always feel is like our truest white, or at least, you know, that's how I feel about it. And then we have ironstone. Uh, if anybody collects ironstone pottery, it definitely um, shows that. So those are our three neutrals whites that are in the farmhouse collection. The last one uh, has been away from us for a while. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite colors. Um, and I was really sad when they like booped it out of the line, but it is back and all of our, all of the retailers are gonna be getting that color back in stock. So I'm super pumped about it. It's dry lavender. The only, I don't have a block painted in it. The only thing I have is this board. Um, so dry lavender is right here. It is a great purple kind of smoky gray. Uh, it goes, pairs with a ton of things. I know purple is like kind of scary, maybe a little bit for your decor, but it's awesome, I promise. So the colors that we just went over are the dried lavender, the French enamel, the luckets, ironstone, grain sack, and farmhouse white is not on this board. Um, so that is what we're dealing with today as far as our color scheme. Um, we definitely flipped what you would normally do. We in the store work with all different eras of furniture. Um, normally when we do our lives, we, I don't know, we kind of seem to stick to, you know, that kind of depression era or, you know, the old primitive pieces. So this time we decided to do mid-century modern. Sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I don't love that. It's not my favorite. It doesn't work into my house. I promise you, when we finish this video, you're going to have a whole new appreciation for mid-century modern, and you will want something in your house. Because I kind of felt like that, like a while, like maybe like a couple years ago when I started the store. 
But since we've been incorporating it into our pieces and, and some of them getting a makeover in really awesome colors, I definitely feel like it can go in anybody's house and you will find a piece of mid-century modern that you love. So typically, it looks like this. Wood, um, clean lines, uh, typically had, uh, they, they put some metal on the bottom of these tables. This bookcase behind me here is a mid-century modern bookcase, very streamlined. Um, we, our Miss Kathy said, no, don't paint the bookcase. And Lori and I said, yes, paint the bookcase. It's going to look amazing. Um, Kathy's on our side now. It does look awesome. Um, this piece is actually, this is a desk. I'm assuming you could have put a TV in here, right, Kathy? Mm -hmm. um, in, in this little, little spot here. Zone. This is some storage. <laughs> or your radio. Your system. Your system. You could put that in there. So, yeah, that, that works for that. Um, but Kathy is totally going to show us how to dress up this piece and how to make it work in your home. But seriously, could totally go in anybody's house. It, it would look awesome. So, a little different with mid-century modern things. They, when we're dealing with older pieces, a lot of the finish is worn off. The prep is very minimal. When you start coming forward to your, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, then you're getting into where they lacquered things. Things wouldn't necessarily be made of actual wood. Um, so we treat them a little differently when we're going to paint them and what we would do to prep them. So we decided, no, we're never painting these end tables because they're really cool. But if I were going to paint these, the prep that I would do, first clean it with some kind of TSP, some kind of remover. Everybody loved to use pledge and, and oils and stuff back then. So you want to get that off of there because any type of oil or wax is going to be a natural resist. So you want to get that off of there. Other thing is... <laughs> um, no, it's probably something important. So on these pieces, I would lightly sand. And when I say sand, I don't mean like spend like three hours on here and sand this down to the bare and get all the finish off. I mean, spend 10 minutes, sand your surfaces and give the paint something to stick to. So minimal prep, so still super easy. So that's what we would do as far as getting the piece ready. Um, now mid-century modern would kind of, in my mind, maybe Kathy has a different thought, but in my mind, chippy, wouldn't really work on mid-century modern. It wouldn't really make sense to me. You're like, I have a totally chip mid-century modern. Um, but anyway, so on our pieces that we did for this um, live, we used bonding agent in all of it. So we don't have any chance of chipping. We've added bonding agent so that uh, the paint sticks to the piece and there is none of that chipping. And we also didn't distress. Um, so a little bit about that and how to go about mixing that. Um, your paint comes in this pouch. I know we've gone over this a million times if you already join, if you join us for lives all the time, um, but somebody could be there first time. So I'm gonna go over it really quick. Uh, comes in these pouches and you measure out. You can use anything to measure. You can use a tablespoon, a cup, whatever. Um, and you're doing equal parts um, powder so we'll put one in the, let's put two. It'll make it a little easier to stir. I need a whisk, whisk Kathy. Two, and then we do the same amount of water. I like to use warm water. Uh, I always feel like it um, mixes up better when I use warm water. So I typically, it's hard to get my, normally I would just pour this. But for the sake of showing you what we're doing, I won't do that. Um, so one, two scoops of powder, two scoops of water, and then you want to add your bonding agent in here. And when you do bonding agent, it's whatever those two are added together. So we did two and two, so two plus two equals four. So that means uh, bonding agent, we would put four scoops of this in here to help it adhere. When I was getting ready for this live, so if you want to know what it looks like when we're getting ready for a live, it's kind of like um, somebody like, I don't know, threw a rock in the pile of ants and we're all like kind of like everywhere and like doing everything all at once. 
So in saying that, uh, sometimes things are a little rushed. So today when I was painting, I was like, ah, oh, this isn't, you know, this, this is what's going wrong. And I thought it would be super helpful to tell you guys some things that could go wrong and how to fix them. Um, or what to do if you're, when you're painting, we want to kind of take our time. And when I was painting this little nightstand, I wasn't really taking my time and it was causing a little bit of some problems um, that I would like to tell you about. So the color we used here is grain sack and that is also what's on this little nightstand. So when Kathy and I or Lori or whoever go out to find pieces that we want to paint or there's an auction, we're looking at the pieces. Now as you can see there's a hole in the back of this piece. So I guess some people would be like oh man you know like I really loved it but it's got a hole in it. Miss Kathy is going to show us that we can buy pieces of furniture like that and totally accessorize it to the point where we don't know there's a hole in the back of there. So mixing this up really good, you can see in the jar, we're good. There's some pigments. You always want to mix it really, really good. And you can use your old jars. There's a little streaky yellow going through there. Um, I would typically let this sit for about 15 minutes and then come back to it, but we don't have that kind of time. So we're going to continue on in um, this piece was that I was going too fast. So I prepped my piece the same as I told you with these end tables. I degreased it and then I um, sanded it lightly, but I was trying to go too fast. So I was putting coats of paint on, I wasn't letting it dry long enough and going to put another coat of paint on here and it was pulling the paint back off, um, which was, you know, it's kind of defeating the purpose. So you want to take your time in between coats. Get that first coat on there, let it dry, and then go back and do another coat. Um, like I said, going too fast, you're pulling paint off um, and it's not, doesn't work out. So that's one uh, little tip that I feel like uh, you might run into. The other thing is definitely mix your paint really well. A lot of times when we're going across these pieces, you're getting the pigments run through your piece and when that happens you can fix it on top of the piece like we see these chunks kind of on the top of here if you go down at the bottom of your jar sometimes you get those guys on top of here and then you see like a streaky yellow will fly through here um, all you have to do to get those things to go away and move back into your piece is just paint and move it back into the paint and you'll have all those pigments there's a streaky yellow run through there. And just keep moving your paint across. The other thing that I came across while we were doing this project, because we were using colors and it wasn't just a neutral, is sometimes if you don't mix enough paint, you get a little bit of color variation. So let's say I did the whole exterior and then I went back and did the drawer. If you're like nearing the bottom of your paint and you haven't been mixing so great, you get a color variation. So you go and pop that drawer in there and you're like, well, that's not the same color. So mixing enough paint to do your project um, is super helpful and not having that happen. Painting with melt paint, super easy. It's thinner than you would normally work with um, some type of paint, but it makes it great because there's no brush strokes. You end up with this very clean and it works awesome um, when we're doing uh, mid-century modern pieces to have that no brush stroke, very clean um, look to it. So those are some of the helpful tips that I feel like when you're painting pieces like this and a mid-century modern look that I feel like will help you get your projects to where you want them. Um, so I introduced the colors. I did our mixing. The only other thing that we have done to these pieces, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna show you what our really cool um, display looks like so I can go over some of the things that we've done paint-wise. Um, and give you some tips on, on what we did. Uh, Miss Lori actually painted our floor. <laughs> we only got one coat on it. Uh, it's grain sack, but we're going to paint the whole entire floor in grain sack, and I think we're going to do a fun stencil, so maybe when you join us next month, that'll already be done. Um, but 
So our floor is concrete and how, Lori, it's stuck. Yeah, it stuck just fine. I did use bonding agent. In there? In okay. the, yeah, in the first coat. I don't know if I will again. And then we might put some polyurethane over the top after the stencil, maybe. But Ooh, it's stuck really well. Yeah. Dried super fast. So in our mid-century modern theme here, we painted a lot of like different surfaces that we don't normally paint. So floor being one of them. So worked awesome. Loved it. She's going to finish it, and the next video um, that we do next month will show you what happened, what we did. And Lori is going to tell you how she ended up finishing it off. Um, we did some really awesome things in our mid-century modern setup for the video. So this is what we came up with design-wise. This chair is everything. Uh, we've all sat in it. It's, it's amazing. Um, and it's an Ames chair, very mid-century modern. Miss Lori was giving me like a little lesson and Miss Kathy, I'm not as great at that, all that artsy stuff as they are. I stick to the painting where I am good. Uh, but the chair is amazing. Uh, we, it's pleather, it's not actual leather. So we were like, Miss Kathy saw it and she was like, nah, don't get it. It's kind of really boogered up. And Lori and I were like, oh, but like we really love it and we want to paint it. So all I did um, to this guy is nothing. We literally <laughs> took it apart, like the, all of this stuff comes off, all the cushions come off. So we took everything apart and I put bonding agent in the paint and I painted it. And I was happy when it kind of like came off, you know, a little bit in places and it looks just kind of super worn. We painted it, put hemp oil on it, and this is what it looks like. So it's... Um, so much better than what it looked like originally. Uh, we did some black paint on some of the metal and that's it. We just cleaned up the rest and this is how this turned out. The color on this is dried lavender. So I think it turned out amazing. Love it. Uh, the wall on the back is, was a, um, a wood wall. So nothing, not treated or anything like that. And we, Miss Lori designed our, our swoosh and painted it with Lucky It's Green, which is that, French enamel, grain sack, and dried lavender. So we painted the whole entire wall, and then Lori came back and did the colors, and then we actually sealed it with hemp oil. So hemp oil like brightens those colors up. It was kind of like drab and dingy, and then when you add that hemp oil, it like really brings those colors out. So that's what we did on our wall. So a lot of different surfaces that we, we used this time and everything turned out awesome. So when you're looking to use Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint, you can use it on anything. And just because the colors say Farmhouse Collection doesn't mean that it has to fit into that box. We can use it on anything. and, and make all kinds of things, you know, look amazing and give them a new life and a new purpose. And I feel like that's really what we did when um, we took on this project. So like I said, hemp oil went on here, hemp oil went on there. The dressers are done in French enamel. They also uh, got hemp oiled. Um, they have really cool hardware on them. But yet again, you know, the very clean line. Wants to talk to me. I'm gonna show her this live and um, tell her that she was interrupting me this whole entire time. Um, my nana is great. I should bring her in here for a live. She would get a hoot. Uh, she would think it was super great. Uh, this guy is painted in ironstone. Um, another one of those. Don't paint it. Uh, but we totally painted it and turned out great. This is what the whole piece looked like originally. But I feel like this can work into anybody's home decor. This part's a desk, um, some storage there for your VHSs, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but in there, what VHSs didn't come out of Atrex. Huh? Atrex. Atrex. Mm. That's, yes. Um, my son was making me listen to, um, he has a cassette player. So we broke that out last night. So very, very exciting. So that's how we did our whole scene. That's my part of it as far as the melt paint is concerned. If anybody has any video, any questions after they watch the video, you are more than welcome to put on questions and Miss Chris will answer them. 
But as far as using milk paint, it's super easy. If you can mix pancake batter, you can mix the paint and you can use it on all kinds of surfaces in your house. Highly recommend it. We're always here at the store to um, help you through any of the projects that you have. So always feel free to stop in. I'm gonna let Kathy take over um, her part of this whole shebang. I'm gonna put this down here because that's where that's where she wants it. And uh, I'm gonna come back on at the end and maybe if we're not taking up too much time, uh, we can do a little uh, tour of the store because we have some really cool displays out there. So I am handing it over to Kathy. Here she is. Hey. Good to be back with everybody. Uh, when we start putting these ideas together, uh, Lori and Laura and I are texting maniacs. We are sending messages all the time. And Laura started with, well, what if we did mid-century modern and pointed to the piece you saw over here earlier? I said, no, don't. Don't. It's so beautiful the way it is. Here's what I didn't know. They were going to leave the doors. And I'm sitting here right now looking at it, so thrilled with how it turned out, and realizing this is my furniture from when I was a teenager. My father designed my furniture. We had a local builder in town. He designed my furniture, and I had a dresser at the bottom, and then I had a fold-down desk, just like this. And I had my stereo system in it. And I'm looking at my teenage room. It has straighter lines. This is a little bit more Brady's Bunch. This would have been in the room with the paneling on the walls. Do you remember? Uh, I had the platform bed with the drawers underneath. He designed the whole thing and I'm excited to see this together. This is a great color combination. So um, when you're doing mid-century, they're always in that natural wood or that laminate wood. So we did flip it as she mentioned and we started applying the colors, the farmhouse colors. And we have the blue over here as well. So how do we turn this into farmhouse? Well, we'll start over here. If you look on this back wall, Laura is a, an auction fiend, and she has me go through everything that she's looking at at auction, but she came to me and she's like, look what I got, look what I got. All right. This is a 70s needlepoint work with the astrology signs in it. And so we have them on the wall here, and this is the moving out of the 60s into the 70s. This is what's known as kitsch. So we're, kitsch is kind of that little bit more of a handcrafted feel. So does farmhouse. So that's our birthing point for moving into farmhouse. And what is this here, you ask? Well, this is a very new... Um, angle to reinventing the 70s. Very popular in young design. Uh, my daughter lives in Brooklyn. You'll see this kind of stuff all over Brooklyn right now. You'll see this in any of the young designers that are on TikTok right now. There's a very clean, reinvented 70 shapes and forms. So I started sending them pictures of these concepts. Friends of my daughters that have already done this on their, the walls in their house. And I never know where it's going to land. And they went, oh yeah. And Lori went at it and she's just gifted and it's amazing and it's amazing to work with such talented people where I can come up with an idea and they go, okay. And the people that are here will, will do it. So how do we take this idea, going from the handcrafted idea of the 70s, meeting the very clean lines of mid-century modern? So um, I referenced the Brady Bunch earlier. Who remembers the Mary Tyler Moore show? Do you remember her kitchen in the 70s? The whole gar garage door that came up and down at the stained glass? We got stained glass over here to a little homage to, I think I was a television kid. So these are more ways that we're getting towards that farmhouse feel of using stained glass. What do we else do we see in farmhouse? We see baskets, we see chippy stuff, we see galvanized things unexpected things. Open a barn, find it, bring it out. But we went ahead and said, all right, everything's painted that's normally not painted. How about everything that goes and gets added isn't painted? So I'm going to build this out and you'll get the idea. 
So natural woods, natural fibers, natural shapes are gonna fill this piece. I'm gonna learn to put things closer. <laughs> By the way, do you love the outfit today? This is my homage to Rhoda Morgenstern. I just need a head wrap and we're there. So again, everything that we just pulled out of the barn is getting put into our Brady's, our very Brady's uh, Bookshelf, exactly. yeah. And I'm making noise. Clean lines, but very farmhouse. Let's see, what do I got left to put in here? Aha. One more. We could do one of two things. We could put this up there this way, or we can give it a little visual interest and put it up there this way. Much like we did the one over here. Whatever you want to do is up to you. And then we talked about how how do you make the the mid-century modern take on a little bit more of that farmhouse feel, and how do we go ahead and cover that hole in the back? Here you go. We just put in a basket. So over here, we've done the same thing. Very farmhousey in the background. We have the um, architectural detail with, with the old tin. We have more brown glass and baskets, and these are measures at time, some time. Uh, cheese? Yeah, it? yep. All right, and cheese forms. Then over here we have um, a dough ball, a bowl, or a ball, whichever. I'm going bowl. <laughs> dough ball. All right. And we're going to go ahead with some more of the natural feel of farmhouse design. So take a look around. Give us some comments. Tell us what you feel. And uh, next time we'll have some more surprises for you. Anything to wrap it up with? I, I, I'm going to sneak right on here with you. Um, so all of these things are like things that I would have picked up at auction. So our take on it was grab the mid-century modern. It's not normally painted. We painted it with the farmhouse collection colors. Um, and then we accessorized it with all the stuff that I would have got at an auction or found in a barn. Um, and it makes it look. You can So you can take these pieces and incorporate it into your home. Even if your home is like so much of this kind of stuff. Um, all these old bottles and baskets and, and boxes. And you can give it, you know, a farmhouse feel even though you're surrounded with that mid-century modern piece. Going back through the colors in the collection, this uh, bookcase is painted in the ironstone. This guy is painted in the grain sack. And you can definitely see that variation even though there they are those neutral colors. You can still see that um, they're very different. This is the French enamel. It's an awesome blue. Um, it definitely can work into a uh, farmhouse, um, that color. I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there when we go through pottery and things like that that um, would work really well um, with this color. The dried lavender, this is the color that is coming back. Um, so you're gonna be able to now get this color with all of your retailers. Uh, maybe Chris can answer that as far as uh, timeline when uh, we will all be able to get that in. Um, so stay tuned. Um, she can post a comment on when we all should have that in stock for everybody to get. Um, going back through this light, I couldn't stand it. This was also <laughs> at the sale where this chair was. Um, so this was kind of where it started um, for our whole uh, theme going on. The stained glass too was at that sale. So um, yeah, but I love I love the light. It's super awesome. Somebody could totally like hang this um, in over their table, but it could be hung over a farmhouse table and would look awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors on the back wall, uh, the luck it's green. 
we did a segment uh, just this past time where we used a ton of Luckett's Green and we used it on more farmhouse primitive pieces. So if you get a chance, go back. Uh, Miss Mustard Seed has all the videos um, that we've done and fellow retailers have done. So definitely check that out because we've used this on some pieces and it looks amazing. Uh, this is your French enamel. This is your grain sack. And this is your dried lavender, which is also on this awesome chair. Um, and then we pulled um, farmhouse white off um, on these frames because the frames were really awful. Uh, so painting them definitely made um, the needlepoint pop and brought the farmhouse into it. I believe next time we get to do uh, white on white, uh, which Kathy is super excited about. So everything is going to be neutral in our setup. Um, so we'll be able to bring uh, those that farmhouse white and all of those colors and show you how that kind of plays. So that's something you can look forward to next time. So Chris said that you can start ordering the dry lavender today. Wonderful. And it should be in the shop by mid-June. Perfect. So look for that. Uh, it's definitely a color uh, that you are going to see us using here in the store. If you do not follow us on Facebook, uh, Vintage 61 Storehouse, we're located in Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, so kind of maybe like an hour and a half outside Philly. Uh, we have a 20,000 square foot store. So it is so worth the drive. I promise you will not be disappointed. Everything that you see and how we do our setups and, and work with things in our videos, that is totally how our store looks. Um, not only that, but all of the stuff that Kathy pulled together on our bookcase, all of those things also have a home here up in our warehouse. So you can kind of pick on through there and find all that kind of cool stuff up there. And then we also have a section of our warehouse where you can go through and find furniture pieces that we didn't touch, that we just got from auction. They go up there and they're waiting for somebody to love them and see a vision for them and put them to good use in your home. Um, we have house over 30 vendors in our store and everybody has a different style. So you're going to find all kinds of, of different styles and things in here. We also have um, home decor and uh, Beekman lotions and we're putting in uh, a cafe bakery and also a winery is joining us in the shop. So <laughs> you can come here, hang out. You can drink and you can get food and baked goods. I am not sure what could possibly be better than that. So definitely working here and being able to eat cupcakes and drink wine. <laughs> so no, we're not hiring, so I'm really sorry. You can only come visit. Uh, no, nobody else on the payroll. So um, that is what goes on here at the store. So follow us on Facebook. Uh, Miss Kathy takes care of our Instagram. That is Vintage 61 Storehouse, right? Mm -hmm. As uh, So look that up on Instagram. You can follow her there. Every once in a while, my daughter Isabella helps us with some TikToks. Um, she is joining us here just making faces at us all, thinking, oh, man, <laughs> my mom, I'm not sure. So she wants this in her room. She does. Like, what do you think? Would this like total? It. You like it? Okay, so my daughter's 14. Um, so that goes to show you. And Miss Kathy's daughter is... I am 14. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how old is your daughter? That does 26. Also, 26. So she also, so you're, you're running kind of through the generations there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 20 something. We're and, not going to talk about this. Right. But uh, Miss <laughs> Kathy is 21. So yeah. So I, I mean, it's definitely running through the generations where you can make this work and there's all kinds of different people that like this kind of, kind of look. Um, do we have time? How long have we been on here? I don't know. You don't know? Feels, feels good. It feels good? Yeah. Does anybody want to see the store at the moment? Yeah? You want to take a walk? Um, so I will take you out here. Uh, there are some really awesome displays that we have in the store at the moment. Um, our hours here are Wednesday through Friday, 10 to 5, and Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 4. We host markets. Those are the second Saturday of every month. Uh, we pack our sheds with vendors, and you can come visit us those days. Awesome things happen. Food, wine, uh, honey, all kinds of cool stuff happens on market days. So always a good day to come and visit us. Uh, and we'll take a little spin. Don't, the, the set, don't mind and all this other stuff that's happening here. This is something really cool that is pretty new to the store. 
Um, and something, she travels all over, but we have a really awesome selection. Um, Rough and Tumble is the name of the company. They're actually based here in Schuylkillhaven. Uh, Miss Kathy carries uh, her line of clothing. They are super rad. She picks up um, textiles from just like Goodwill and things like that. And she actually, they go through this dyeing process um, and they come out looking like this. Ms. These Kathy? are all original fabrics that she makes into clothing, but uh -huh. some of the old shirts. Um, flannel shirts are from everywhere. Are all dyed, so you can see some of the old flat flannel. And she only did a few of these. Oh, but they're so oh cute. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a little a little one, um, please come and did the tutu. Uh, the there's girl. only one. She only did one, and it's waiting for the perfect little girl. So cute. Yeah. Okay. So my daughter's 14. Where Where do you stand? You would absolutely wear some of this stuff, right? Yep. And yep. Mm -hmm. she would totally I bet much. she would wear one of these. This is works. Um, we have all different patterns, but it works as a bathing suit cover, as a shawl. It's got the one long sleeve but you can take it in different shapes and wear it different ways. Oversized shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what, head wraps? We have, yeah, the T-shirts. Gator and the gator. Dresses. Pajama pants. That, um, those are all um, re, like, upcycled yes. items, um, but super comfy. You would wear those. They are. Yeah, See? They're really yeah. Cool. And they're really soft. Um, so the pajama pants, we have a bunch of those. Show my girl. Oh, this oh. is, um... What do we name her? Bloody. <laughs> uh, she's fabulous. She's gorgeous. I, I mean, like, seriously, they did, like, such a good job, like, back then when they were, you know, making mannequins. Um, but she's got the head wrap on, she's got a little scarf, and she's got one of these dresses. I have some of these dresses. They're super great for summer to just, like, pop on and, like, go wherever. So, highly recommend you pick up, um some of these guys um, the company is called rough and tumble and she's uh she travels all over and does markets yeah, and, and things like that but as far as here where we are i don't know of anybody else who carries the line so um it's really awesome and she's really awesome to deal with the company is amazing oh i do have to make mention of this this what? is like the coolest thing ever all right, dress form? we're talking, well, the dress form is to die for, is it not? Yes. Um, but when you're talking about the 70s meeting the farmhouse, okay, take a good look at this. It was made in 1972, and it's polyester. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> this is to me exactly what we're talking about today. Nice. Love it. <laughs> this is Isabella, because now she's totally going to get on camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my daughter. I actually have three kids. Uh, my son, who I'm super proud of, oh, they're all ducking behind the counter, so they're not on the camera, so I feel like they should totally be on the camera now. Um, my son just graduated from college. Uh, he's soon to be 21. My daughter, Isabella, is 14, and then I have a, a younger one. Uh, she is 11. Her name is Juliana. My son's name is Tyler. So just a little bit about me um, in, in that scheme of things. We always redo all of our displays. Uh, obviously, Memorial Day is coming up, 4th of July. So we normally do a spin on Patriotic. So that is what exploded in our front display. Um, everything's painted in tones of blue and red and white. And then we incorporate some new items with old. Like the glasses are old and the things that we painted are old. Those are old fire hose reels. We brought in some new flags and old flags. So this space uh, is as soon as you walk into our store. And then behind you in this space, there's Isabella again. Um, <laughs> we kind of did, what did you tell us? The lake house. The lake house. Um, in here, lots the chairs are really awesome. Miss Kathy found this really cool boat coffee table. The painting we picked up at this last auction, which is phenomenal. Lori wants to clean it up, so I don't know, maybe that'll happen one day, but it's really awesome. So that's what's happening in our front, like right when you walk into our store. Um, like I said, our store is 20,000 square feet, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, when Lori pans over here, you're gonna see all of this space full of stuff to come and see. Um, like I said, we incorporate the new home decor with things that we find at auctions and estate sales. So I don't know that we have any 
any other displays that we, oh, we, there's a display in the back that we did everything in black that's really cool. Um, this buffet is awesome. I can't believe it's still here. Uh, we just got this done last week, but super awesome. Uh, we have this really cool setup um, where we did black and grays and this section looks, oh, Lori, look at this. She, there's a mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm being <laughs> careful, uh, you know. Um, so this space looks really awesome as well. Um, everything done in tones of black and gray and bringing in some metal. Um, so this space turned out really awesome. Um, we house our Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint over here on some shelves. Um, and you're always more than welcome to ask us any questions. Um, all of that stuff is in here, our bags of paint. So that's always housed right here by the counter so that when we see you guys looking at things, um, we can answer any of your questions. So feel free to, to do that and stop in and we can walk you through the whole process. Um, this is where our brand new bakery slash winery is gonna go. Miss Lori painted the outside in mustard. It looks really awesome. Uh, we have been remodeling this space <laughs> Slowly, we had to put it in a whole new well. I mean, we're, we're doing things around here. Um, right now it's housing florals, but it's going to house seating. Um, and our bakery is the Rustic Confectionery, and she makes amazing baked goodies, and it's really hard to work here and not eat everything in here, as Miss Kathy mentioned. So we try and stay out of here, but she does cookies and cupcakes and macaroons, and this is biscotti and scones. It's ridiculous. Um, and then also in this space, we're going to have a winery so we can have wine slushies all day. I'm not sure <laughs> how much we're going to get accomplished here when that happens, but we'll do our best. Uh, so that's it. That's a tour of the store, uh, Vintage 61 Storehouse. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram and follow us and comment on our video um, and share it. Uh, if you liked everything that you saw, give it a share and throw it out there into the world and we would greatly appreciate that. That would be super awesome and we will see you next month. See you later. Bye.